This is the second in a series of webinars that deal with the topic. We had the webinar on recognition a few weeks ago. If you want to go back, there was a recording of that that you can look at. And we'll be looking at disclosure very soon. But this time, we're going to be looking at measurement of financial instruments and the presentation of financial instruments in the accounts. Now, as we go through, we will also touch on de-recognition of financial instruments when we're considering the measurement of a financial instrument where something significant has changed. But before we get into detail here today, just by way of introduction to make our topic here today a little bit less abstract, let's just generally talk about what we're dealing with. What you've got here is a few images on the screen, an old share certificate, a modern dealing screen. And what I'm trying to say is that not only have things like shares and other financial instruments changed over the years, but the accounting treatment has as well. When I first qualified as a chartered accountant, shares were shares, and they went in the bottom half of the balance sheet. No ifs, no buts. We didn't worry about what rights the shares conferred on the shareholder, but if an entity issued shares, they were treated as a share, and they were presented in the bottom half of the balance sheet. Indeed, I remember a few years ago coming across a particular case where there were loans from a shareholder to a company, and there was a negative balance sheet. By converting those shareholder loans into preference shares, which, to be honest, didn't have terms significantly different from a, uh, from a, uh, a loan, uh, we transferred this credit, this debt, from the top half of the balance sheet to the bottom half of the balance sheet, making it look much prettier. So one thing we're going to look at quite a lot here today is different attributes to shares and for other financial instruments that would have them presented in different parts of the balance sheet and measured differently. Nowadays, not all shares are shares. Some shares have got the attributes of a liability and they need to be presented with debt and the financing for those needs to be presented as a cost of debt, not as a dividend. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll be looking at a few examples on that a little bit later on. But what we're going to be having a look at this webinar is we're going to start off with a brief reminder of the relevant standards. In the last webinar, we spent a little bit more time on this, but I'll just give you a refresher of which IFRSs we're dealing with. Then we'll move on and we'll work through a number of examples that deal with presentation and measurement, particularly of liabilities. I will, from time to time, talk about presentation and measurement of assets, but to be honest, they're much less interesting. In the real world, they can be relatively straightforward. It's the measurement and presentation of liabilities that can be the most challenging, so naturally we'll spend most time on that. We will briefly touch upon derivatives. I'll touch upon them because I imagine a lot of people listening don't spend a lot of time dealing with derivatives, but we will touch on those. I'll also touch on hedging derivatives and why for most people the hedging option for accounting purposes isn't normally very realistic. And we'll finish off here today and I will talk about offsetting assets and liabilities. Just a brief little point that is worth covering in terms of presentation. What conditions do you need to meet to offset your assets and your liabilities? So let's get started and give you a reminder of the relevant standards in this subject area. Now, a problem we have at the moment is that we are in somewhat of a state of flux between new accounting standards and old accounting standards. As I speak today, for the majority of current period ends, you will be looking at IAS 32 and IAS 39 that deal with the presentation of financial instruments and recognition and measurement. To a large degree, these might be presented as large, uh, separate standards, but they're not. They're thoroughly integrated. It's very difficult to deal with IAS 32 or 39 in isolation because they cross-refer so much in terms of definitions. On top of this, there is IFRS 7 that deals with financial instruments disclosure. That isn't a topic that we're getting into very much here today. 